from eBay we have the latest gadget that I've purchased. Uh, this is a 12 volt DC computer power supply. And as you can see, it's actually a lot smaller because it doesn't need nearly as much. And I have not tested this yet. As you can see, it's still sealed. And now it was, I think it was about $20 with shipping. Um, the I thought I was buying something that had like a car plug on it because that's what it showed in the picture. But it seems to be a barrel style plug here. So I'm going to need to figure out which side is uh, positive and which side is negative before I can use it. But it it claims to be 100 watts. It, do, it definitely looks well built, but I know the Chinese tend to overrate their electronic devices, so I'm not... I don't think it's going to blow up or anything, but I might... I don't know if it's actually good for 180 watts. And yeah, in this bag, we've got the cords. You have the CPU cord, of course, and then um, one Molex, three SATA power connectors, and if you need the 3.3 volt line, you are out of luck, as these do not have it. A lot of cheaper power supplies don't have that. But most of the time, it's not necessary. Anyway, to test it in, we have this system that some of you may remember uh, from eBay. It's the 30-ish dollar Prime Systems Core 2 Duo. Now, I've upgraded this to a Core 2 Quad, but it is still the same system, more or less. It has a changed optical drive, because I stole that for a different system. Uh, I believe it came with 2 gigabytes of RAM. I upgraded it to 4, I think. Um, I've tried various operating systems on it, but for whatever reason, this particular unit does not like to run much of anything other than Vista very well. Now, it still has its problems even with Vista, like but Vista is, puts up with it the most for whatever reason. Um, for example, it likes to reset a lot. So that is one of the reasons I chose this one. Because if it blows up, it's not a huge loss. Sure, maybe that's a reasonably spec processor, but it's not entirely that valuable. So uh, we'll go ahead and hook this up. As you can see, it is definitely the full 24 pins, and not 20, even though this particular system will work with it with a 20-pin ATX connector. And these are actually some decent quality uh, crimped power connectors. They're not molded, which the molded ones are known for catching on fire, so I guess that's for the better. I bought this 14-gauge wire from the hardware store, and that I will use to run from the end of this cord to my power distribution board, which of course goes to the battery. Um, because I'm not really using a car, I don't really have a need to put a car plug on here, so... Well, I now have the wire hooked up to the computer in some fashion. As you can see, it, it's running through the back panel, and then it's just sort of taped to here for now, because this isn't going to be the computer that I permanently set up with this thing. It's just to test it with, because it's one of the systems that I least care about if it blows up, because, I mean, the motherboard already has problems. I'll go ahead and hook this up to the power distribution board. So now is the real smoke test part, as I plug the fuse in. Wait, shoot, that's not... <laughs> There we go. Okay. Huh, that's weird. Well, I guess I'll see if I if uh anything changes if I hook it up to a keyboard mouse and a 
monitor, of course. As you can see, this video has been supported by Kawartha Dairy. In a literal sense only, I'm far too poor for sponsors. So now, I guess, smoke test number two. Once again, that just... I don't know what's up with that. That's weird. I don't know if I'm, like, overloading it somehow and it shuts down because of that. Because this should technically be within 100 watts at all times, because the CPU is 95 watts. Then the RAM and motherboard are going to be uh, a negligible, negligible amount more. So that should definitely not be pushing 180 watts. Because this battery is currently in a float charge mode with my 100 watt solar panel, the voltage is quite a bit higher than uh, 12 volts exactly. So I did get this cruddy old battery here that uh, is about 12 and a half volts. And I guess we'll see what happens when I power it on like this. Well, this time two fans spin, but and then it just immediately shuts off. Oh, well, if I want it to work, I might want to plug in the CPU power connector. And now I did have it plugged in the previous times, so I just did a stupid this time. So we'll try again. Okay. No idea what those high-pitched beeps were. I, I didn't even know this motherboard could do high-pitched beeps, but yeah, I pulled the memory out and that's what it's complaining about there. Well, I did go ahead and populate channel A with RAM. So we'll go ahead and turn it on again and see what happens. Well, it might it might just happen to post here, so that would be a good sign. So if we go to hardware monitoring here, we should be able to see our voltages and 11.5 on that. That's uh, that's acceptable, but that's a little low. So all those voltages are well good enough I guess. Well I'm not exactly sure what it was about last time but it's starting its post process just fine connected to the solar battery again. Although the sun went away so the voltage isn't quite as high that could have something to do with it. But just to prove to you that it does fully function I'll have it boot into an operating system and don't be fooled Windows XP 64 bit isn't on here anymore. Not that I really care so much that that partition actually got uh, obliterated because, uh, well, Vista's the only thing that really runs well on here, like I said. So I already showed you the voltages in the BIOS, but as you can see it is pretty much running off of, I think it's not regulating the 12 volt rail, so you may want to watch out if you have something with a real high voltage, like if you have it plugged into a car, I believe those can go up to 14.3 volts. So you want to make sure that that's going to be within the tolerances that it can handle. Because you can see it just went up a little bit as the sun came out. But other things you might want to consider is how the distance from the CPU power connector and this Molex connector is not very long. As you can see, it just barely reached the optical drive here. And they're not very thick wires, so you definitely don't want to try overloading this power supply. And one more thing to consider is you can see how close the top of the power supply is to this part of my uh, drive cage here. And that would be a problem if you're using a very small form factor case. I suppose they probably do sell 24 pin ATX extension cables, if I had to guess though. So it may not be the end of the world. I suppose we might as well see how it reacts to be putting into sleep mode. It should, it should handle it just fine, but we might as well look. Ah, uh, Vista in its hybrid sleep. Well, to be fair, it's not Vista, it's 
Vista and every other OS that follows. Alright, now it's off. Before the voltage climbs too much, I'll definitely turn it back on. And... Uh-oh. I would have to imagine that plugging in this 300 watt incandescent bulb would do it. There we go, the voltage kicked right down. And I'll go ahead and plug the fuse back in while that's happening. Hopefully it won't drain the battery too much in the process. Alright, unplug that. And the computer is on, so that's good. Mind you, none of this is going to happen once I get the voltage actually regulated, but it is something to consider that it's very picky about the voltage because it doesn't actually regulate the 12 volt rail, and it wouldn't surprise me if it doesn't do any actual regulating and it just sort of divides the voltage to be where it's supposed to. You know how I was just moaning and complaining about hybrid sleep? Well, because the thing didn't, reco didn't recover from sleep normally, it's resuming from that hibernation file, so we'll be back where we were. Well, as soon as the computer feels like uh, returning us to that state. And there we go. Thank you for watching the review of my of this cheap Chinese power supply that runs directly off of 12 volts. If you liked it, please feel free to leave a like with the thumbs up, and if you have a comment, you're more than welcome to share it. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Oh boy, it wouldn't be a proper video without addendum, would it? But anyways, these batteries are living a second life because I've actually managed to recharge them using this stupid charger, which is supposed to be for nickel metal hydride batteries. But if you monitor them closely enough, you can actually manage to recharge alkalines in it without them leaking. And it will not automatically shut off upon a full charge, so you have to measure the voltages yourself. Now, I have heard that they're more likely to leak um, after charging as well, but I've got a cup full of them that I've recharged, and none of them have leaked, so I don't know how true that is. But, nevertheless, I wouldn't recommend it, at least not without the alkaline charger that you're supposed to have. For real this time, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.